I really believe that every new project is a new opportunity to become a better thinker, a better sketcher, and a better designer. Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be showing you my workflow inside of Morfolio Trace. So if you are a complete beginner to Morfolio, this video is for you. I'm gonna be covering the very basics of the app. I'm gonna be showing you some essential tools that you need to know as a beginner sketcher. And overall, I'm gonna be giving you some tips for a better workflow in Morfolio. And this video is the first video of a small series of tutorials that I am doing in collaboration with Morfolio Trace. So I'm really happy to partner up with Morfolio to create more content for you. So more tutorials that are gonna be part of this series on Morfolio Trace are gonna be available here down in the description of this video or up here once they are released. So if you're watching this in the future, you can access them down below or up here. So to not miss out on any of that, make sure you are subscribed to my channel and also make sure to subscribe to Morfolio. I will leave their channel down below. So let's get right into it. Okay, so I'm here in Morfolio Trace and if you go to your left, you can see a little icon. If you click on that, you will have an extended menu of options. You have your recent projects, you also have what you have deleted. So if you click on select and then you can manually select them and delete them forever if you wanna do that. And you can also go to your settings. Uh, we're gonna be coming back to the settings uh, later in this video and also in future tutorials. So make sure you know where this is. And you can also go to your help just to get some extra help videos from Morfolio. So let me click on the icon again. At the very top, you have some additional options. So you can order the projects by name, by kind, also by date on which you created them. Um, it's really up to you how you wanna organize them or also by the date where you modify them. So that's that option for you. And you can also create new folders. So you will give it a name and then you will have a folder if you want uh, to have specific projects all inside of a specific folder just to keep your things more organized. You can also do that. Now, if you click on select, then you can do a bunch of things. So you can manually select all of your uh, drawings or your folders even, and you can do many things. So you can copy them and then you can bring them to a folder. So click on done and then click on the folder and then you can paste them there if that's something you wanna do. I'm gonna go back to my projects and you can also do some other things. So if I select an, any project and I can duplicate it, that'll create a copy of that project. You can select it and delete it if you don't want it anymore. And if you click on it, you can change the name. So I always recommend you to keep your sketches or your projects with names so that you can identify them. So I'm gonna click on done. And also if you select more than one project, you can also group them. So that'll open a new folder for them. So that's another way that you can create a folder and just have uh, your sketches or your drawings in that specific folder. Make sure to give that a name and then um, you can have things more organized. Now I wanna go to the plus icon because you're gonna be spending a lot of time there. You have many different options here. For now, we're just gonna focus on these two. And later I can talk about the rest because they are pretty advanced. But for now, I'm just gonna click on blank. And I would create a blank document every time that I wanna create a sketch. Uh, probably I'm in front of a client. If you go back, you can actually change the name uh, and give it a name. It'll give you the option to give it a name. So I'm gonna go back to my project and here uh, you can see that you have a blank sheet of paper. So if you pinch on your screen, you can actually make it smaller, you can make it bigger, uh, you can control how close you wanna be to the paper, um, if you want it to be zoomed in or zoomed out. But if you click on the layer, it'll zoom to fit. Here on the left, you have your different tools that you can use. You have pencil and you can choose the thickness. I normally just keep it at 12.8, but you can decide where you want it to be. And you can also change the color uh, by going to the color palettes. These ones are folders that are created by other designers. So you can create your own folder. I'll come back to that later in another video. And here, if you click on this icon, you will see that you have options to choose pencils or an eraser, and you can actually have your favorite markers uh, on your main toolbar. So I first have the line marker because that's what I use the most, and then I have the watercolor brush. 
but you can organize them however you want. But I will come back to those markers uh, later. But right now, I just want to do a quick sketch uh, just with a black color and my default pencil. And I would just do something like this if I'm like working on a project and just working on the very initial phase of that project. Probably I'm brainstorming some ideas and I just want to put it into paper. So this is a great way to just come up with some design solutions on the spot. You could do this even in front of a client. If you're in a client meeting and you're just discussing some options, it's really helpful. And the beauty of this is that if you mess up, you can quickly delete whatever you've done in a matter of seconds by using the eraser. So that's why I really love a digital workflow. I also like sketching on paper, but digital sketching is just different because sometimes digital sketching feels a little bit less intimidating because you can very easily remove things or erase things. Okay, so I want to show you what we have here on the right side hand. So we have our layers. So these ones are a bit similar to what you would have in Photoshop, for example. This is your base layer, so it's always going to be there and also layer one. So every time you create a project, you're going to have a layer one and then you are also going to have a base layer. If you click on the plus sign at the top, you can create another layer. So you see how this paper is put on top. Uh, of your existing uh, layers and on your existing sheet of paper. Depending how zoomed you are into your screen, the layer will be that size. So if I'm zoomed all the way into this side and I create a new layer and I zoom out, you can see that I have like the little outline because the layer is only covering that part of the drawing. Uh, so I'm just going to delete that because I'm going to show you a different workflow. So if you don't want this feature, you can actually enable it. So what we're going to do is you want to go to your uh, settings. And here I'm going to look for the option that says stack layers and I'm going to turn that on. And now let me show you how this will change the way that the layers get added. So now every time that you add a new layer, it's going to be the size of the sheet of paper that you have. So no matter how zoomed in or zoomed out you are, um, the layer is going to cover the entire sheet. So I find this a better workflow and it's a little less messy. You can also hide the visibility of the layer if you want, but I think this is just a bit better and this is just how I do it. So what I would recommend is to organize your layers and probably have your drawing line work on one layer and maybe your annotations, which is your text on a separate layer just to keep things organized. Probably you want to delete the text or you want to hide it. I normally have my text on a different color so that I can see it. So I would have my text on a different layer as well so you can see how you can easily hide it and just show it every time that you want. Uh, and you can do the same with your actual drawing line work. This keeps things very organized. Now you can see that the layer actually has an opacity. So you can turn that off. So it's going to be completely clear or completely white. And you can also change the color, but we will talk about the other options later. But I normally just have my layers completely clear so that I can see all of my line work and it's not getting um, a bit blurry. But I'm just showing you my workflow and you can do whatever works for you, whatever you're most comfortable with. So now we're going to do a custom size sheet of paper. So if you want something that has a specific size, probably you're going to print this or you're working on a floor plan, then you probably want to choose a size. So for now, I'm just going to choose 11 by 17 and I'm going to do one to one scale. The scale doesn't matter right now because I'm not going to get into that because that's more advanced level and I'm going to be explaining that in another video. Uh, but for now, uh, we're just going to do 11 by 17 and I'm actually going to import a photo. So if you click on this icon, you can import a photo. So let's say that you're working on a project and they give you the floor plan of the existing house or apartment, whatever that is. So you can actually bring that in into your uh, sheet of paper and then it'll create a new layer for your photo. So I'm going to bring this layer up, which is the one that I'm going to be drawing on. So this would be really good if you're working on this project and probably you're going to be changing the layout of the kitchen and maybe you are discussing with the client what are your options. So probably the clients want like an island in the middle. So you can very quickly uh, sketch some options. Probably you want to change the doors, make the balcony bigger. There are literally 
thousand iterations and many options that you can do. This is really one of the best ways to iterate between different ideas when you're working on interior design projects. If you're changing the layout, the space planning, probably you're changing the furniture, maybe you are uh, doing some test fitting for furniture, millwork. This is such an easy and quick way to space plan. This is what space planning is in interior design and it's such an important part of our job. And I think that just doing this type of workflow uh, on an iPad with Morfolio, it just makes it so easy. So this would be probably like a first option and maybe the client says that they hate it. So I would have to do like a different option or a different space planning solution. Uh, so probably they want to keep the L and they want the island to be facing the other side. Maybe the balcony is not as big as the other option. So it's just iterating between ideas and just coming up with the best solution with the clients. And you see how I'm doing this in a matter of seconds and I'm just coming up with, with ideas that eventually will turn into a project that is functional. And I would really encourage you to approach space planning in this way because it's truly a game changer and it just makes your process so much quicker. So this is just a sneak peek of what you can do in the app. I know that this was a super beginner, extremely beginner tutorial, but I just wanted to show you and to give you an introduction into the app, show you the very basics. And even with this quick tutorial, you can already start sketching and getting creative with your ideas, doing some freehand sketches, some space planning, and just getting your ideas onto your um, canvas. I will be covering so many more amazing tools in the upcoming videos that I have for you that are part of this series, as I already told you. So make sure you are subscribed and you can access the playlist down below at once they are released. I hope that they are really helpful so that you can start uh, using Morfolio in your interior design or architecture workflow. If you have any questions, make sure to drop them below and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.